I'm curious, I was um, really impressed by Sir Ken Robinson's uh, presentation about his education healing creativity. And given the fact that our education system was set up with math and language and then humanities and then the arts, because it was born in the industrial era, how do we go about turning that upside down? Where do we start? We, we have to sort of de-school society, but boy, there's so, the trouble with all of this I mentioned this morning, these institutions have such inertia, they're all entrenched. The Department of Education all have jobs, and they entrench their job, and they don't want to turn anything upside down. Um, teachers have their jobs, teachers unions have their role to play. Uh, the kids would love it if stuff got turned upside down. But how you get at the entrenched uh, official uh, that is another question. But as an art teacher, I figured everybody would write off the art teacher as eccentric. And I, so I got away from murder. My marks were always late. Never had my register done properly or anything. And, um, well, scientists have to follow rules. Artists break rules. <laughs> scientists, scientists, artists. scientists don't have to follow rules either. They have to be imaginative. I, I think many, many of my friends are scientists, and they are more creative than many artists who just crank out pop boilers. Same thing over and over and over again. Uh, if art is anything, and this should not be about art, I like to put my getting into all those other things we talked about in the sessions while we're all together in one. Is this a plenary? I never know what that word means, but it might be, it might be a plenary. Um, but uh, if, if art is anything, and this is what we insisted on, it's intensely you, it's who you are. And uh, I remember I judged an art competition one time, which is against my principles, as I already said to some of you, I'm, even, though, even though we have a, comp we have a calendar competition, I'm against competitions, calendars, or otherwise, but we have to in order just to, to make the whole thing work. And the kids seem to like it, especially the winners like it. Uh, and maybe the, the others like it as well. We're trying to think of ways of getting everybody up on the web and that kind of thing. But, um, it's, it's, so I judged this comment, it was a, was a women's volunteer group for Hamilton Art Gallery. So these were ladies who were interested in art and painted art in spare time. Every single painting, with one exception, was what I would call escape art. It was palm trees, excuse me, Hawaii is an escape, I know it's your world, but, but, the, but there'd be palm trees in Hawaii with the sunset, or uh, Venice, Venice Street, Venice Canal, and you know, it was escape, what I would call just escape artists. It's, it, it's not their world. Any artist worth his salt has always done his or her world. And so I gave a little speech at the end, and I said, uh, your world consists of a shopping mall and backyard barbecues. And there were suburban people. Well, I'm not going to Where is it? I don't, I don't see it. I mean, the guy's world was backstage in the ballet and the race course. And uh, Van Gogh's world, when well, you know the story, Tom Thompson's world was on the park. Uh, so, with, well, any artist with the salt does, does his world. There was only one painting, and I gave it flying colors. It was by an elderly, probably way younger than I am anyway. I thought it was an elderly, elderly English lady who lived in the Hamilton area. And it was a nice little painting. She'd actually been in art class. Was it a relative? No. <laughs> she, and she knew how to, uh, it wasn't Queen Victoria either. But she knew how to uh, lay paint down. Uh, but this was the scene. The front steps of a church after the church service. With all the ladies dressed up, this was back in the 60s and 70s. That's, that's the main event of the week for those folks. They get their new hats on. And they go and stand on the front steps of the church. They don't go to church for religion. They never talk about the sermon. You know, they gossip and they comment on other people's hats, maybe, or, you know, what a nice outfit you have. Uh, that's their world. That's what, that's what the subject was. It was a beautiful little piece of real art. It was the only real art in the whole show. It has to be about you. Uh, we would encourage kids, we give 60% uh, of the mark for the kids' study books, what we call them sketchbooks. If your world is motorcycles and you're a guy, I expect the whole thing to be full of motorcycles. If you're a girl and your world is horses, the whole thing full of horses and tackle and all that kind of stuff, and you can write about a 
where it's authentic. Yeah, it's authentic for where, the, where is your soul. And it's easy to find a little piece of nature near the school and make a little piece of nature a little piece of your soul. You know who did that the best? And I think you'll agree is Andrew Wyatt. Yeah, Andrew Wyatt. That's right. That's right. Yeah.